this next problem, it's really hard to identify where to start. Of course, we have exponentials, which means we're going to need to use logarithms to solve this one. Or you might remember back to section 6.3 where we actually solved problems by getting a common base. That would work if our bases were multiplying, but the fact is they are individual terms that are adding and subtracting. This actually takes us back to our very first assignment in this class where we solved problems that are quadratic in form. You just, it's something you just have to get used to identifying that this can be written as a problem that's quadratic in form. In fact, maybe I should have written this a little differently, but I guess it shows the progression the way that I did write it, because 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So if I have 2 squared to the x power, that means 2 to the 2x but that can also be written as 2 to the x to the second power. So I have a term that's squared, another term that's not squared, and this can therefore be done with a u substitution. So this is again quadratic in form. So yes, you should watch for those. So many things to remember. Let u equal 2 to the x so then everywhere that I have this 2 to the x, I replace it with a u. So that gives me u squared minus u minus 12. I've now gotten rid of the exponentials, and I can simply solve the resulting quadratic. So does it solve? I think it does. Like a negative 3 and a positive 4 will do the trick. So u can equal 4, and u can also equal a negative 3. Okay, at this point we don't need to check anything. All we need to do is take those answers, if you remember, from our first test and our first section in the book, section 1.4. We have to plug those back in and solve them. So I'm going to plug in 4 equals 2 to the x. Then to solve this, now I'm going to change this to a logarithm. Or you can just use the method of changing this to the same base. So 2 to the second power is the same thing as 2 to the x. So therefore, x would have to equal 2. Or if you want to, you can change this to a log form. You, the base of the exponent is 2, so you could do log base 2. And then um, the logarithm equals an exponent, so that's equal to x. And the other number goes here, so then you think to yourself, well, 2 to what power is 4? Well, 2 to the second power is 4. You wouldn't be able to do this one in the calculator unless you also changed the base to something that would go into your calculator. So see how we got the same answer for either one. Okay, that I just did the same problem twice. I still haven't done this problem, this part of it at all. So let's now do that one. So uh, we're going to plug the negative 3 in place of the u. Is there any way to get a um, common power on this, or a common base? No, there's not. Let's go ahead and change this one to a logarithm. So it would be log base 2 of negative 3 equals x. What's the problem? Well, we're trying to take the logarithm of a negative, and we can't do it. We can't take the logarithm of a negative. So therefore, our only answer is x equals 2. I'm going to combine two examples in one video this time. Here's our next example. 2 to the x power equals 5. You kind of just saw a demonstration of how to do something like this, just barely in problem number 3, when we got either a common base and did it that way, or we went ahead and changed our exponential to a logarithm. I'm also going to show you another way you can do it. So this would be an example of doing the problem by changing the exponential problem to a logarithm and using that to solve it. The problem I have with that is that if you want to get a decimal answer instead of an exact answer, then you have to also use the change of base formula to get your decimal answer. Um, I am not very good at remembering the change of base formula, so that's why I like to do this another way. Instead of changing this to log form, which I could do, so I could just do this problem by saying the log of 2 of 5 equals x, and that means that x equals this thing, so that is the exact answer, would be log base 2, 5. Okay, so you could leave your answer like that if they want an exact answer. But then what if you want an approximate answer? Well, then you can either use the change of base formula to change this, 
or you can do this a different way. So another method I'm going to show you uses one of those properties that we learned last time that I reviewed at the beginning of the first video and that was the property that we can take the log of both sides. So if you're going to do that, use base 10 or base e so that you can do the use the calculator. So I'm just going to do log base 10, 2 to the x equals log base 10 of 5. I took the log of both sides. I can now, because this is now an exponent, I can move that out to the front so that it's just multiplying instead. So then it would have x times the log of 2 equals the log of 5. Well, if you remember, I said we use opposite things. So we have multiplication here. We want to get this down to an answer the x is by itself, so to undo multiplication we divide by both sides. So we can do log base 10 5 divided by log base 10 2. And if you remember, that is actually a use, that's actually what the change of base formula ends up looking like. So that's what I usually do instead of memorizing the change of base formula. That allows me to then find an approximate answer. So this is also an exact answer. So you're probably thinking, well, this answer looks a lot different than that one. How can they both be exact answers? Well, this one just has a base that we can't put in the calculator. This one has a different base because it's more or less like we've used the change of base formula. Or you could use the change of base formula to show that this and this are the same thing. Okay, so now we can plug this in our calculator by going log 5, make sure you close that parenthesis, divided by log 2, make sure, well you don't have to close the second one, it'll work either way. And we get approximately 2.32 for our answer. This one's exact because it's not been rounded, this one's approximate, there's no way of getting an exact decimal answer because this will be an irrational number.